All right, so this is the ram that's leaking, and uh, it's leaking badly out the top here. And right now, I uh, I just temporarily put this attachment on here, and I have already removed this uh, special packing nut in the top here. Um, I believe that ju there's just a wiper in here, and it really isn't responsible for um, keeping fluid from coming out because. The idea is, unlike, unlike a double acting hydraulic cylinder, there's only one port and all the hydraulic fluid is supposed to stay on this back side of the seal assembly on the rod. So what I've got going on is I've got hydraulic fluid getting past the seal assembly on the rod, getting into the front section here and then coming out through here. So. Unlike a double acting cylinder, there's no hydraulic port over here so that when you reverse direction, you use hydraulic pressure to push it back, like on a backhoe or something like that, or snow plow, or whatever. Instead, what they rely on is there's a spring in there. So with this on, I've already taken out the cap screw in the bottom here and drained out as much fluid as possible to make this a little less messy. But with this all apart, I can pull on this. Okay, and see it goes right back in. And the reason why is because there is a large spring inside here that's responsible for returning this to the shortened state when you release the hydraulic pressure. So the kits online for the seals on these are available. You can get a kit and it will have like all the O-rings and seals to either do just the ram or do there's a spreading attachment uh, for this particular model or to do the pump. Now my pump seems to be working fine uh, so I just want to do the seals in the ram. So I looked up for the four ton ram and I looked up the seal kit number and the cheapest I could find was like thirty dollars and then another like ten bucks shipping so the cheapest I could find online for that kit was forty bucks and then I'm gonna have to wait for it. So I have a pretty good hydraulic seal supplier in the city and I talked to him on the phone and he feels confident that if I bring in the cylinder so they can do it by size that they should be able to find me a, uh, a packing that I can use in this. So I've got to disassemble this. I'm removing this uh, check valve assembly. It's the uh, connector for the hydraulic line to go on and it's also got a built-in check valve so that when you disconnect the hose, the fluid in here will just stay in there. Once I remove the check valve, there is a uh, small Allen, it's like a grub screw down in there. And what this grub screw does is this actually anchors the spring. So right now, the reason why it's getting pulled cockeyed is because the spring is trying to release. So the spring just popped over. There are, uh, a few different uh, manufacturers that are making these and they're all knocking off like the same initial design but there are some variations between them so in uh, this particular case uh, this body is all one piece this wider section down here is actually the same piece of metal as this this has just been turned down right here I scraped off the uh, paint and took a good look at it and realized that because I thought it was way too difficult to try and unscrew this and the reason why I thought this unscrewed is because there are some models where this part will unscrew from this and that's how you take it apart the other variation is um, that I should mention while we're on the subject is uh, I mentioned that I unscrewed this long almost like a grub screw in order to uh, release the spring well on some of these this isn't a grub screw. On some of these, it's a roll pin. So you actually reach in there with uh, needle nose pliers and you can slide the pin out. Uh, so that's another thing to keep keep in mind. So if you look in here with a light, once you take this um, check valve out and you don't see the, you know, the place for the Allen wrench to go, then your chances are you're looking at a roll pin and you just slide it out, slide that sucker out. So on, on this style that does not have the ability for this to unscrew from this, where this is one piece, instead what they do is on this end, they have this almost like a gland style nut. 
that you have to unscrew. It's got these two little slots. Now I have, I actually put it away, but I, I have some bicycle wrenches of all things that I keep. Uh, I pick them up at flea markets, you know, real cheap, and I keep a couple of them around, and occasionally I have to regrind them a little bit to make them work, but oftentimes they will get me out of a bind when I'm trying to open up something like this that I don't have the correct spanner size for. So I've unscrewed this. So now with the spring tension released, I can pull this out. And once I pull this out, this actually should be able to come out here. Let's thread this on and make, make it a little easier to grab onto. So after you get this gland nut out, this is supposed to pull out this way, but you might have trouble getting it out because of the seal that gets in here uh, messed up inside there. So what I was able to do is uh, take a sharp pick and bang it into the seal enough so I could then pry and rip out a good section of the seal. Once I did that, now the whole thing slides right out easy as can be. And up inside here we have the spring. Hides up inside there. And now that I've got it out, we can clearly see why this is leaking so badly. Let me zoom in here and show you what's left of the seal. So this O-ring is not the main seal. This garbage that is crumbling and falling apart is the original packing or seal for this. So how do you like them apples? That is just completely disintegrated, gone. So rather than buy the expensive seal kit, I'm going to bring this to my uh, local industrial supplier of seals and uh, hopefully he'll be able to size me a packing that will fit here and we'll also replace this O-ring and this packing seal up in the top. All right, so now I've got my parts for the reassembly of this ram, or rebuild for lack of a better term. So I ended up getting this, uh, this kind of Viton seal here and uh, hopefully this is gonna work out just fine. And then for this groove right here, there was an O-ring in here which must act almost like just a wiper or something um, because this is what's really responsible for keeping the fluid pressure at bay. So the design of this seal is almost like a concave groove or there's a groove on one side and it's got a taper to it. So the idea is you want the pressure side on this side, on the, on the groove side. In other words, you can almost see because of the taper that if the pressure was on this side, it would uh, not do a very good job of sealing. It would want to cave in on itself and let the fluid pass by. If the pressure is from this side, the idea is as the pressure grows, it does it actually it pushes the seal up against the walls and seals even tighter. So I'm going to make sure that I install this. Obviously, this is because this is a one-way acting cylinder. All the pressure is coming from this direction, so I need the groove to face down. So we'll just stick this over this, like so. There we go. All right. And then in this groove here, I found an O-ring that fits pretty well. Not quite sure what the purpose of this O-ring is, considering the packing is doing all the work. Um, but since there was one there when I took this apart, I decided to put it in. And then also, uh, in addition to that, we got the um, this weird packing that was in the top here. Um, so I found an O-ring that fits fairly tightly in there. And once I put this gland nut in there and tighten it down, it will compress this O-ring in there and pretty much do the same job as the packing that was in there was doing. But before I put this in, I'm going to figure out exactly how the heck 
I'm gonna get that spring back in position. Probably the best way for me to handle this is gonna be to actually do a little bit of trickery here and get this spring kind of in position before I lower this down inside there. See, the problem is the loop goes up inside the tube here. So when it's down inside here, I can't see a loop in this hole that I can stick that screw down into, the retaining screw. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a, well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. All right, I can't tell you how many times that I, uh, roll of picture frame wire has come in handy here in the shop. So I just cut off a nice long piece and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run one end through the end of the spring. And I'm gonna get this about to the halfway point and put a little bit of a loop in it and get the two ends of the wire and just put a little twist in the end just to keep them together for the time being the reason why i want them to keep them together is so i can make it easier to snake them through this hole in the bottom i need a pair of pliers all right there we go now snake this through Reinsert the cylinder. Now, as I pull the wire and get the spring to come out, I could see whether or not the spring is oriented correctly. And it looks like it is not. So I gotta turn this a little more. All right, so now I should be able to pull that spring and hopefully there's enough clearance in the loop for me to insert this little long grub screw that acts as the keeper for the spring and not interfere with the, uh, and the wire won't interfere with it, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, it sure looks like there's plenty of room in there. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm hoping that this wire is flexible enough that it will just wanna slide right out of there as I pull one end of it. Voila. All right, now install this last o-ring slash packing deal that o-ring might be too fat wouldn't be surprised at all if that was a metric o-ring originally well that o-ring's not going to work it's interesting because there's just the slightest little ridge down in here so if the o-ring ends up being too thin or too skinny it will just go right past that little ridge and end up down here on the cylinder and be useless. It really doesn't serve any purpose. And this bottom screw just had a regular O-ring on it. So yeah, I ended up leaving out that O-ring or packing or whatever the heck it was. And uh, we'll see. If it leaks, then I'll have to figure out something else to go in there. Put a little bit of uh, Teflon tape on these threads. And since there's a check valve on here, uh, it's just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to pre-fill, partly pre-fill this cylinder with uh, oil. Oh, on second thought, maybe I won't because I don't know how much oil's in the uh, main cylinder. I'll let it work itself out. All right, let's bench test this thing. I think it all leaked out when that 
took this apart. Okay, so top off the fluid. Which I believe is right here. I like how they put the fill right underneath the uh, handle mechanism here. But I, I got this little fill bottle with this plastic spout. Makes this kind of work handy. Makes this kind of work easy. Err. Uh, not sure how much I need to put in. Guess I'll try it now. Oh, it's already moving. That's the max. All right, so I mean the real test is going to be to uh, see whether or not it's actually got any power. So uh, I've got just the project for this little sucker. Can't get over how easily this can get bent like this when a rock rolls up underneath the brush hog while it's running at speed. And yet, how difficult it is to bend this back. Well, I'd say my port of power is repaired. Thanks for watching.